Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer Practice Lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. This lab will be the first in a series of labs about access control lists, or ACLs. It's very important to be familiar with ACLs for the exam, so make sure you're comfortable with them. This first lab will be fairly simple. We will configure numbered standard access lists. ACLs can be numbered or named, and standard or extended. We will configure other types in future labs, but for now let's focus on the simplest type, the numbered standard ACL. A standard ACL can be numbered from 1 to 99. Make sure you remember that little fact for the exam. 1 to 99 is for standard ACLs. A standard ACL controls traffic based only on the source address. On the other hand, an extended ACL can control traffic based on the source and destination address, as well as other things which we will look at in future labs. In this lab, we have to configure these standard ACLs to achieve two requirements. Only the 192.168.1.0/24 network should be able to access server 1 and PC4 should not be able to communicate with the 192.168.1.0/24 network. To achieve the first requirement, let's go on R2. Now, you may wonder why configure R2 as opposed to R1. Well, standard ACLs should be configured as close to the destination as possible. If we configure it closer to the source, for example on R1, we may inadvertently block traffic that we don't want to block, since the standard ACL only looks at the source address. In this case, the destination is server 1, so we will configure the ACL on R2. Enable conf t. To configure the numbered ACL, use the command access list. Now I'll show the options with the context sensitive help. As you can see, 1 to 99 is the range for a standard ACL. You can also see the range for extended ACLs, 100 to 199. I'll use the number 1. Now let's check the next option. We can deny, permit, or add a remark. Remarks are useful when, on a large network, you have large amounts of ACLs, so you can identify what each ACL is for when looking at the configuration later. I won't configure one now, however. We want to allow only the 192.168.1.0/24 network to access the server. I'll use a permit statement first to allow the 192.168.1.0/24 network. Now let's check the options again. I can input an IP address, I can tell it to permit any source, or I can specify a single host. Let's put in an IP address, 192.168.1.0. Now, what's the next option? Wildcard bits. ACLs use a wildcard mask, as opposed to a standard subnet mask. I'm not going to explain exactly how these work here, but a wildcard mask is an inverse subnet mask. So if a bit is 1 or 0 in a subnet mask, its equivalent bit in a wildcard mask would be 0 or 1, respectively. If you have no idea what that means, I recommend reading up on wildcard masks to get familiar with them. Anyway, the subnet mask for a slash 24 network is 255.255.255.0. So the wildcard mask is 0.0.0.255. Okay, that's it. We have created the ACL which permits the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network. Now, do we have to create another statement in this ACL to deny everything else? Actually, we don't. At the end of every ACL, there is an implied deny all statement, meaning everything that doesn't apply to a previous entry in the ACL will be denied. Do show access lists. As you can see, that deny all doesn't actually appear in the ACL, but when we try to ping later, it will work as intended. So, we have created the ACL. Is that all we have to do? No, we have to apply it to an interface. 
Following the rule of applying a standard ACL as close to the destination as possible, let's apply it to the F00 interface. Interface F00. You can apply an ACL to an interface with this command. IP access group. Now I'll type 1, the number of the ACL we created. Now let's check the options, in or out. Which do you think is appropriate? The answer is out, because we aren't filtering traffic coming in from this interface. We are filtering traffic going out from this interface towards server 1. OK, we have made and applied our ACL. Let's test this ACL first before moving on. I'll go on PC1. PC1 should be able to reach the server. Ping 192.168.3.100. As expected, the ping works. Now let's try from the 192.168.2.0 network. I'll go on PC3. PC3 should not be able to reach the server. Again, even though we didn't configure the ACL explicitly to deny any traffic, it will by default deny any traffic that doesn't match the entry permitting the 192.168.1.0/24 network. Ping 192.168.3.100. Immediately, we get a response from R2 saying the host is unreachable. Now let's satisfy the second requirement. PC4 should not be able to communicate with the 192.168.1.0/24 network. Let's go on R1 this time. Enable conf t access list 1. Now this time Let's create a deny statement. Let's check the next options. Since we are just denying one host, let's select that and type in the address, 192.168.2.14. Now, is that all we have to do? Remember, I said there is an implicit deny all statement at the end of an ACL. So this ACL will deny PC4, and if the traffic comes from anywhere else, it will deny it also. That's not what we want. Let's create a statement to permit everything else. Access list 1, permit any. Do show access lists. So ACLs are read from top to bottom. If traffic comes from 192.168.2.14, it will be denied, and this permit any won't apply. If traffic comes from anywhere else, however, it won't be denied, and then our permit any statement will allow it through. The implicit deny any still exists, but nothing will get that far, because this permit any will catch everything that the first statement doesn't. Now let's apply the ACL. F00 is closest to the destination, so interface F00. IP access group 1 out. Before we test this, what do you think would happen if we applied the ACL inbound on F10 as opposed to outbound on F00? It would prevent PC4 from reaching anywhere outside of its own subnet here, because if any traffic sourced from PC4 enters R1's F10 interface, it will be dropped. OK, let's test. I'll go on PC3 again first, and I'll ping PC1. Ping 192.168.1.11. OK, it works as expected. Now let's try from PC4, which shouldn't be able to reach PC1. Ping 192.168.1.11. Again, we get a message from R1 saying that the host is unreachable. We have successfully used numbered standard ACLs to achieve the requirements. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, please consider contributing to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Jeremy's IT Lab. I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave Verified Publisher and accept BAT or Basic Attention Token donations in the Brave browser.